Okay, I'm some kind of excited. I get to hang out today with Moses Neimer. I'm here at Joy TV. We're going to be recording a, a TV show for baby boomers. But if you come from Canada, you know who Moses Neimer is. And if you don't come from Canada, you may not know who Moses is, but you should know. He created the Open Newsroom, Much Music, those concepts. He is the first person to put videographers in the field collecting news as both cameraman and reporter. He created the first vloggers. Oh yeah. Just a reporter. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna call you for Ready five minutes. So I don't need this. Nope, we won't take that one. We, I'll, I'll... All right, I'm in charge of umbrellas. umbrellas. So they're going out to shoot some other stuff and you're probably wondering why I'm so excited to hang out with that guy. So, if you grew up in Canada, you grew up on television watching a station called City TV, and you grew up watching Much Music, and you grew up watching something called Speaker's Corner, and those are all the invention of that guy there. Now, he created social media long before social media was it, because there was a product they had called Speaker's Corner. Now, if you grew up in Canada, you know this product. <laughs> It was like a phone booth where you'd go and you'd drop a loony in. That's a Canadian dollar. You'd drop a loony in and you could say whatever you want. You could be goofy, you could be stupid. And one of my friends decided to go into the bathroom and you know, we were getting like a little stupid. You could be political, you could be inappropriate, you could be appropriate, and then they would edit that together. And like we decided to strip down naked and compare nipples. And deliver it on a super popular late night TV show. Hi. We're very naked ladies, and we're a little too cheap to make our own video, so here you go. One, two, three, go! If there's someone you can live without... It was Instagram before Instagram was born. Hey guys. So you're probably wondering... You're thinking, wow, Steve's having a bit of a fanboy moment here with Moses. And there's a reason for that. Uh, when I started in television, uh, we did our first seasons of our TV show. We did them in uh, at, at Educational Broadcaster. We did them at a station called the Knowledge Network. And uh, we were there for eight years. But Moses uh, had City TV, and he had a new series of stations called the A-Channel. He always thought that our business model and what we did with our old Dotto's Data Cafe, which was the name of my show back then, he thought there was real legs to that. And he always encouraged me. Every time I saw him at any event, he always said how much he appreciated my business model and the way that I was bringing technology and teaching Canadians how to use technology. And that meant so much to me, to have a, a real leader of our industry recognize my little show and always encourage me. And when they opened a station in Vancouver, and they acquired a, a station, uh, they got in touch with me and they, we set up a deal so that we then moved our TV show from the educational broadcaster over to commercial television. And that was the real beginning of the brand, of the Dottotech brand, and which has finally led to where we are today. So I owe much of my past to Moses. But more than that, we all owe what we see on television and the way media has evolved to his imagination. The open newsroom, the, fact, the, 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 the stuff that we see on cable television with, the, with a live dynamic newsroom, sending people into the field with cameras to both record the news but also report on it themselves, which I, I always say democratized news. It, it got so much more coverage out there into the field uh, because the costs were so much less. Now the quality did suffer, but they always believed at City that having the story on air was more important than making sure that everything was perfectly lit and the sound and audio was perfect on everything. Uh, it was, the content was king when it came to City, City TV, which was Moses' flagship station. They also created much music, the, uh, the, 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 which set the stage for the explosive growth of music videos. And they turned downtown Toronto into concert halls. They would shut off the streets and they would open the doors to their building and they would have live concerts that were just so, so much a big part of the culture of the city. And, and Toronto thrummed to the, to the rhythm uh, of much music. Um, all of this was, were concepts that Moses Neimer created. That's why I'm a fan.
that was a great day. Any time that I get an opportunity to spend time with Moses, I, I look forward to it and I, and I revel in it. I am that much of a fanboy. And I think I articulated to you earlier on why that is, but just in case you missed any of these points, if you watch television anywhere in the world, Moses Neimer changed the world of television all through the 1980s, and it all happened at City TV in downtown Toronto. So much all started there, uh, so much of what we see in, in the direction of the sky. All of the millennials and the Gen Y who are now leading the world, developing all of the social platforms and social media and all of the tools that we use, they grew up on the content that Moses created and the style of content that Moses created. And is it any wonder that so much of what social media is that we do is designed to allow us to communicate? What better example than the Speaker's Corner example where they set up these kiosks where people could drop a dollar in and share what they were thinking, share their success, share their frustrations, share their observations, share their humor, share their infantile humor. All of the same things that we see being shared in posts on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter were being shared on television at that point there uh, it, it, with, uh, with, with Speaker's Corner. And the big difference, of course, was incredibly limited bandwidth, not unlimited bandwidth, which meant that all of the people that would go to Speaker's Corner were compressed down into 22 minutes of television a week, uh, which, of course, created a premium for it, but also allowed them to create a, an environment where we didn't stray too far off the rails. You know, we had a, uh, there were there were regulation bodies, the CRTC, that made sure we weren't talking about things that were inappropriate, and there was the ethos of the of the producers who looked at content and could decide what was going to be shared and what wasn't going to be shared. Those filters, of course, have been lost as we see in stark reality with things like what's happening with Facebook and Cambridge Analytica and the loss of uh, loss of and how apps are accessing private data and all of those sorts of things. But that's a story for another time. I just want to bask a little bit and enjoy. As we shot old school television, sitting around a table having a conversation in a studio with Moses Neimer uh, and myself, uh, and I was vlogging about it while we were shooting the old school, the old school TV show. So that was kind of fun. There was a little cultural collision happening at that particular moment. But I will, I would, I would go along. I would drive a long way to spend a few hours talking to Moses. And today was today was uh, today was special.